all functions have characteristics that we want to look at being able to identify either graphically or algebraically. We'll start off by looking at this graphically to identify some characteristics that we've already discussed. Specifically, we'll start off by looking at the intercepts for this function that we have on the left. In this case, we have three. We have x-intercepts occurring at x equals negative 2 and 2. Or we could identify those by the actual coordinate pairs, negative 2, 0, and 2, 0. Keep in mind, we can also refer to these as zeros of our function, since they're values of x such that f of x equals 0, meaning our function value is equal to 0. We also have a y-intercept, in this case occurring at y equals negative 4, or we could identify that with the coordinate points 0, negative 4. And then we can also talk about the domain and range. We already established the domain and range of this function. Our domain is negative infinity to infinity, and our range is going to be a closed bracket at negative 4 up to infinity. Since our function will never achieve a value smaller than negative 4, but will continue increasing in bo on both sides up into the positive direction for y, so we'll never hit a maximum value for y, we'll be able to continue increasing. If we look at the graph on the right, we see that we have a little bit different function behavior. Our function is increasing on one end and decreasing on the other. So our domain will actually remain the same. It'll still be negative infinity to infinity, since we can continue looking in the x direction, in the negative direction, or the positive direction. And no matter how far we go, we'll be able to intersect that graph again. Our range, though, will be different than the previous example, previous graph in the sense that now it will be unlimited or unbounded. Since that function is increasing in one direction, decreasing in the other, we'll never achieve a maximum or minimum y value we can hit. It will just continue to increase. In this case, we only have a single intercept, which occurs at the point x equals 0. So our x-intercept would be at x equals 0, and our y-intercept would also be at y equals 0. We can take that idea and look at a new graph, which has an additional question mixed in here. We want to, in example 7, identify the domain and range of this graph, its intercepts, and also how many times the line y equals negative 1 would intersect with it. We want to take notice of what's happening at either end of our function so that we can determine the range. In this case, our function is increasing in the positive y direction, decreasing in the negative y direction. So our range is going to be unlimited in this case. And our domain will be as well. We can identify x-intercepts x-intercepts at negative 4. Um, this is approximately 2 and a half and 5. Which again are zeros of our function, since f of negative 4 is going to equal 0 f of 2.5 equals 0, and f of 5 is equal to 0. And we have a y-intercept occurring at y equals negative 7, which in function notation corresponds to the idea that f of negative 7, or I'm sorry, f of 0, is equal to negative 7. The other part of this question, where we're asked how many times the line y equals negative 1 intersect this graph, 
can be answered by just drawing that graph of y equals negative 1 over top of our function. So y equals negative 1 would just be a horizontal line passing through negative 1. And we could see that we would have three points of intersection between that horizontal line and the graph that was already provided.